What's up Brozones, welcome to the Ozone and welcome to another reaction to the Five Nights at Freddy's books. Yes, we are doing Tiger Rock Epilogue. Okay, that was not a valid English sentence. Um, we are reading through the leaks of the epilogue for Tales from the Peace Vex number 7, Tiger Rock. So we read Tiger Rock yesterday, it is, it's a new dawn, it's a new day. Uh, and I am pumped for this one because apparently, apparently it's pretty big. Apparently it's pretty good. So, very excited to get into this one. Thank you to William Blaine Alton once again. And, uh, yeah, let's just get straight into this. I don't know where these epilogues are going, but surely we can't have a lot more people dying. Surely not. Um, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Uh, let's get into this. Uh, Kelly, Lucia called, stop. Kelly is very distraught and is running through the dining room, a sobbing mess, ignoring Lucia until she trips on a chair. Uh, Lucia examines Kelly's tan crop top and olive capri pants, which are now torn and filthy and remembers how envious she was of her before. Envy. Now that was a hoot. What a wasted emotion. Emotions mentioned. Chat. Panic. <laughs> True. Um, Lucia isn't crying because she's a wreck of emotions. Jace was dead. Sweet, harmless Jace. Jace, who Lucia had treated like crap. Jace, who had kissed Lucia like she'd never been kissed before, right before he went off to die. Oh, she must feel so bad. She must feel so bad. It had thrown Lucia's emotions into total chaos, tossing out the window all that she'd thought she knew about boys, about what she'd thought she felt for Adrian, and what she'd thought she hadn't felt about Jace. Wow. Wow. That's... Wow. Um, Lucy's not letting his death go in vain and decides that they need a plan. Kelly, really? Really, they need a plan? No way. Kelly uh, begins to judge Lucia for not crying when they hear metal noises coming from the hallway and run into the pizzeria's lobby. Uh, it's bashing and banging around trying to get out and Kelly is running away. She runs toward the main entrance, which is blocked up by concrete and rubber and literally starts digging at it. Uh, in a final desperate attempt to get out. Kelly was clawing at the concrete. Her nails were tearing. Blood was running down her fingertips. Oh, I hate that. I hate it whenever they talk about um, fingernails. Um, where do you guys think this is going, by the way? Do you... Th is someone going to escape, or are they all going to die? And, like, it has to set up burn traps, surely. It has to. So, we have a mimic endo, but it's it's not burn trap yet. It's clearly not burn trap. Where does the flesh come from? Where does the suit come from? And then, like, and then we can start kind of talking, I guess. It's it's difficult. It's difficult to to know. It's difficult to know where that comes from. But I hope it clarifies in these epilogues. Um, and I have a feeling. I have a feeling we might start to get something like that. Um, but hopefully, we see Vanessa or something putting. No, wait, the Mimic 1 virus is probably already in there. I don't know, I don't know. Lucia tries to wrestle Kelly away, but she refuses, even cutting Lucy's cheek with her broken nails. Eventually, she tires herself out, and Lucia decides to assure her that they'll find another way. The next sound she heard, though, had her choking on the words she'd been intending to use. The sound wasn't as loud as the other sounds they'd heard. It was just a clatter and a scrape. But the volume of the sound wasn't the issue, it was its location. The sound wasn't coming from the storage room, it was coming from some place closer than that. The Mimic was no longer contained. After the Mimic had dismantled the unit that had been in the little tunnel, it had turned and assessed its surroundings. Its visual and auditory processes had registered one small enclosed room, one door, 17 boxes, 5 opened and 12 unopened, 18 toys, 11 plush animals and 7 dolls. One of the dolls stared at the Mimic. The Mimic determined that the dolls should be handled the way it had learned to handle all endoskeleton-like objects. <laughs> Such objects had a head, a torso, two arms and two legs. The Mimic was programmed to break off the limbs and heads. Absolutely. The Mimic had leaned over, picked up the pigtailed doll and ripped its head from its body. It then tore off its arms and legs. Yeah, this kind of shows that it doesn't know the difference between endos and humans. Obviously, it copies humans' interactions and it was programmed to, um, to just rip off the arms and legs. And so, there you go. Uh, and also kind of spoilers actually no it is spoilers for tiger rock but tiger rock is connected to that and, and you'll know why if you've read tiger rock 
uh, the Story Tiger Rock, which I've already uploaded. Um, so yeah, the Mimic had leaned over, picked up the pigtail doll, um, trying to study the room's door. Okay. The Mimic does not approve of the Elizabeth theories. The Mimic knew how to open a door, so it had walked over and grasped the door's handle. It won't open, so it applies more force, which rips the handle off. Uh, he's now able to open the door, but now the Mimic faced a solid expanse of metal, a tabletop that blocked the doorway. It had no established protocol for getting through a solid wall, so it turned away from the metal. The Mimic was not designed to be confined in a room, so it had accessed what it had learned about existing rooms. It immediately recalled watching the boy unit swarm into the little tunnel, which was the other way out of the room. The Mimic would copy the boy unit and go out of the room that way. The Mimic pushed aside a stack of boxes to gain access to the entrance of the small tunnel. It bent over. The tunnel opening was small. It, its head fit through the opening, but its shoulders didn't. This wasn't a problem. The Mimic simply needed to take a different form. It was programmed to do this. It could take any form necessary to fulfill its functioning. The tunnel goes up instead of down. Ah, oh, damn it. The Pizzeria Simulator Labyrinth will never be addressed. I really hope it does, though. I mean... We might only have one book left, like we're not too sure, but it might be one last book and so I don't, uh, maybe it's not going to happen. But I always thought that they would go down to the sister location, location because technically it's underneath if, uh, if the FNAF 6 location was the original Fred Bears. Anyway, uh, <laughs> he's like Miguel O'Hara, instead of sticking to walls he uses claws to climb. Is that, okay, that is, that is definitely spoilers. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I don't care. It had to use the sharp tips of its fingers to pierce the metal so it wouldn't slide backward down the tunnel. Stabbing at the metal to gain purchase, then compressing and contracting its limbs to fit within the confined space, the Mimic was able to heft itself to the top of the tunnel slope and launch itself into the next section of the vent. Um, okay... Lucia now has an idea to buy them some time. It didn't matter how many times Lucia crossed through the shamble of broken tables and chairs, chaotic piles of construction metal or material and mounds of metal and human body parts. Lucia's skin crawled every time. I love that, by the way. That's great. Um, the room wasn't so much a room as it was a tomb, a chaotic explosion of death and decay. That's a great line. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so much stalling. Lucia grabs two endoskeleton arms from a pile and they make their way backstage. Everyone's favorite place. They go to the room where the mimic lured them last. Lucia's plan is to get in costumes. Lucia picks out a blue spotted doll costume, but Kelly is disgusted. She spied a bright court jester costume. Jester, huh? Isn't that what we see in the Mimic? I believe the Mimic dresses up as a jester at some point, or it could have been in the epilogues. I don't know, I can't remember. The costume was the only one in the room that wasn't made of for force fur, and it looked cleaner than the rest of them. Lucia stepped up to the costume, suppressing a shiver at the gesture's leering, toothy grin and its wide eyes. In contrast to the gesture's man manical grin, a uh, maniac, man maniacal, maniacal, <laughs> maniacal grin. I don't think I've ever seen the word like spelled out. I've heard the word before, but I've never seen it spelled out. Its colours were cheerful and vivid. Its face and its jester hat and tunic were half raspberry pink and half greenish yellow. Okay. As soon as Lucia's hand slipped into the jester costume sleeve, she recoiled and snatched her hand back. She stumbled away from the costume, her breath spurting in, a, in agitated gasps. Lucia shook off her alarm and turned away from the court jester. It's okay. I just almost got into a springlock suit. <gasps> what? <laughs> Spring what? <laughs> it's, okay. it's okay. I just almost got into a springlock suit is all. Wait, so... Wow, so the Jester costume is a springlock suit. Theory time. Sister location. There is a springlock suit in sister location. Nobody knows who it is. I'm talking about night four. Could it have been a Jester? Because that does fit in sort of with the theme of the circus. Or not really. I mean... I mean, sort of. I guess... I guess it could work. I don't know. Possibly. Anyway, I don't know what kind of law connotations that could mean, but there you go. 
It's interesting that the jester is a springlock suit. Anyway, Lucia grabs a greyish rodent costume. I read about springlock suits in one of the manuals I found in the office. Lucia said, they have metal clamps that are designed to lock on the wearer, but their design was faulty. The clamps are lethal. They can literally crush the wearer. Really? I never heard of that. Insane law. Hang on a sec. I have all the important quotes somewhere, but it's hard to track them down. <laughs> Wait, do you do that? That's actually really cool. Um, so Lucia's reasoning is that the mimic clearly doesn't attack the suits. Uh, <laughs> damn it. It always happens. Uh, so if it thinks their suits, maybe it'll leave them alone. I don't think it's that dumb. I, I think it's pretty smart. I, I think it will it will find out. It, it will find you if you're in a suit. She also notices that the concrete slabs by the rear exit were breaking and hopes to use the endo arms to break them th enough to escape. It's a good idea, yeah. Lucia realises that just a few hours before they were a full group. Now there's only two left. When we were trying to get out, I noticed the concrete slabs over the door back there had crumbled more than the slabs over the other windows and doors. They're in smaller chunks. I think we might be able to use these endoskeleton arms to lever the chunks away from the door. Maybe. Um, <laughs> that's funny. His corpse is still last where they left it. That's creepy, man. Concrete and cement are often used interchangeably. Lucia said softly as she worked, but actually cement is just an ingredient in concrete. Concrete is a mix of aggregates, meaning sand and gravel or maybe crushed stone. Oh, she's played Minecraft, man. And paste. The, past, the paste is water and cement. Kelly gave Lucia a who cares look, but Lucia ignored him. Concrete usually hardens over time, but cracks like these, Lucia gestured at the concrete they were attempting to work free, can be caused by a number of conditions. Because concrete is porous, it absorbs water. When the water is in concrete freezes in the want there. Yeah. When the water in the concrete freezes, it separates the cement binder from the aggregate and causes crumbling. Makes sense. Um, Kelly grunted as she attempted to move her slab again. Another cause of cracking comes from the aggregate itself, she said. The, min the minerals in the gravel leach out and start the crumbling. Okay. They put on the costume heads and hide with the other costumes and Nick's corpse. Uh, they struggle to hold their breath because the costume is so stinky. Um, the gap between the st stage curtain goes black. Just beyond the curtains, the tapis rasp started coming their way. Through the mesh of the uh, rodent's eye holes, Lucia saw the stage curtain flicker, then it swayed, and then the backstage light went out. Now in complete darkness, Lucia's other senses became more clear, making the rodent suit even more unbearable. Her body begins to ache, standing for so long, she hears the mimic's footsteps. To relax, Lucia does math equations in her head. It was a trick her father taught her when she was little. Her mother told her to think of nice things like the beach in order to calm her down, but think about the beach made her think about boats and then dolphins and then dolphins getting murdered by humans after being caught in nets. <laughs> Wait, was that actually in the book? I know you haven't quoted that, but that's funny if that's not in the book and you just made it up. Uh, good joke. After a good dozen equations, the lights turn back on. It worked. The mimic has left. Hmm. Lucia had never looked too closely at the costumes in the wardrobe area because of Nick, but she had registered the colours of the costumes without even realising that she had. She'd seen black, brown, blonde, dirty, white, yellow and pink. Now, however, however, she was seeing a brighter pink, an almost reddish pink. Oh! <gasps> Who is it? <laughs> Who is it? She would have noticed a uh, a, a sur what is that word? Uh, she would have noticed a costume that had been there before, especially if the pinkish color was part of a creepy mushroom cap. Another mimic costume. So all the mimic stuff has gone down here. I don't know what that means for the law. Maybe like wait. So surely that means Henry also tried to burn all of Edwin's stuff in the pizzeria simulator fire. I mean, that would make sense. It's part of Fast Brand Entertainment history. But that's really cool that we see that costume again here. Because if you don't know, uh, the Mimic in the story, the Mimic hides as a mushroom man and a jester. So it's, it's really cool that we're seeing that again. I really like that connection, actually. That's really cool. Um, the white spotted mushroom cap was atop a gaping eyed mushroom stem wearing overalls that matched the cap. The mushroom's character face had an eerie yawning black hole of a mouth. Lucia surely would have noticed the costume it had been there before. 
if it had been there before. So it wasn't there before. Hmm, I don't know. I'm, I'm a bit, I'm, I'm confused with that. It probably was there before. She's just panicking. Um, I don't want to know what is going on down here. <laughs> anyway, it takes off the mushroom costume. Lucia has to force herself not to scream. When Hope, just minutes before she had died, described the mimic, she described it as big, shiny black metal skeleton. Before Lucia had found the user's manual that told her the thing that had killed Hope was a robot called a mimic, she and the others had thought of the thing as the creature, but it had been an upright, vaguely man-shaped creature. The drawings Lucia had seen in the manual had depicted an upright creature as well. The user's, the user's manual, however, had said the mimic could take many forms. Apparently this one was one of its forms. Um, creeping out of the back of the overall's clad mushroom was an abomination of twisted and contorted metal. The abomination was a mass of metal joints and wires that were shaped into something vaguely resembling a mutated spider. Oh no! No! I don't think my arachnophobia is that bad, but it's still bad because nobody likes spiders. I have hair on my mouth. Um, I'm going to hate this. With one of its eyes on one leg and the other on its back, the frightening spider had nine legs instead of a spider's usual eight. Somehow that makes it creepier. Oh, and the other one, it's back. The frightening spider had nine legs instead of the spider's usual eight. One of the legs extended from where its mouth should have been. Where is the mouth on a spider? <laughs> the legs pulsed through the air like a proboscis, seeking something to suck into the scuttling creature's bowels. Ugh. <laughs> a proboscis is like a... You know those monkeys with the really long noses? Those noses are called proboscis. I don't know if that's the right... um. Proboscu? <laughs> I don't know what the right plural is for for multiple proboscises, but there we go. That is a proboscis. I know that because for some reason my granddad always used to say, my aching proboscis. Yeah. Unlike the... <laughs> cool story, bro. Unlike the Mimic's footfalls when it was upright, this configuration of the Mimic's parts made a x x sound, a sloppy ticking sound that was at the same time squelching wet and dryly brittle. Cool. Um, the Mimic moves. The Mimic circled the blue dog. Its proboscis-like extension searched the air around the blue dog costume as if trying to sniff out the costume's authenticity. Twice, the Mimic backed away from the blue dog. Each time it scooted forward again. It used one appendage to tentatively tap the blue dog's foot. The Mimic was acting like it was studying the blue dog as if it was confused by it. How did the Mimic reason? Lucia thought. Would it figure out the ruse? I think it will. Lucia sighs, it was going to be okay, but then it wasn't. In a nanosecond, one of the mimic spidery legs reached out and, pull and peeled open the back of a blue dog costume. The instant the costume was breached, the mimic warned its way past the edges of the matted blue fur. Inconceivably, shockingly, the mimic shoved itself inside the costume with Kelly. Lucia heard a sickening crunch. She hadn't even finished thinking Kelly's name before Kelly screamed. Her screams... Lung their way deep into Lucia's heart. Oh no! Oh no! Have we lost Kelly? Okay. Here's here's something very off topic from that, by the way. <laughs> what if, like, it, it would have been really cool to see more of this sort of thing in Security Breach. I know that's a big ask, but to be fair, we didn't get that much with Burn Trap in Security Breach. It would have been really cool to see more of this, but that's not to say that that might not happen in Ruin, because that could well happen in Ruin. We know that the Mimic is probably going to be involved still. But also, if you think about it, Help Wanted 2 is a thing. It could be, like, Help Wanted 2 could just be a whole game based around the Mimic, because we know, like, Pizza Party in in Help Wanted 1 was very close to like the Mimic and, and like the Mimic literally mimicking the past of Freddy's and then luring a child in and, and killing. So like, what if Help Wanted 2 is just the Mimic hiding in loads of different suits um, and... Sorry, I just had a really random thought. Um, yeah, that, that connects to, to the Tiger Rock story. It connects to the Tiger Rock story somehow, but I'm not going to say how because you might, you may not have read it yet. Uh, it's a bit weird if you haven't read it yet, to be fair. You should probably read the stories and then the epilogues. Anyway, um, and then what if in Help Wanted 2, we have to fight Mimic in multiple different forms? 
uh, and then that's that gives us a lot more mimic lore and stuff, and then that continues the story. I really hope they do that. I really do. Anyway, I'm going to sneeze. It's gone. Okay. So, the mimic shoved itself inside the costume with Kelly. I actually missed that part. <laughs> that is horrifying. That is terrible. The scream wasn't the worst part of it. The crunch was followed by a snap, then another. Oh my god. Okay. I was about to say, what if this is a spring bonnie suit? And then... And then that means the mimic plus Kelly plus spring bonnie suit equals burn trap. That would have been really cool, except thank you, Blaine, for saying that these aren't spring lock suits. Thank you for clarifying that. Uh, I'm sure people in the uh, in the live chat at the time were, were like, yeah, this is definitely burn trap origins, but yeah, cool. No misconceptions. The snaps aren't locks going off. Okay, good to know. Kelly's screams go an octave higher. The snapping is joined by spongy, wet, splintering sounds. The costume's blue fur started going dark. The darkness began at the costume's center mass, and it spread outward quickly, too quickly. She watched as lumps and bulges writhed under the blood-saturated blue fur. She watched until the blue dog costume began to collapse, folding in on itself, crumpling toward the stage. She continued to watch when the lumpy pile of bloody fur convulsed and then went still. And she watched when the blood-soaked blue doll costume once again took form, unfolding itself from the stage to stand upright. She continued to watch as the blue dog walked off to the right, out of Lucia's line of sight. When the mimic was no longer in view, Lucia couldn't bring herself to look away from the blood pool spreading ever wider on the wooden floorboards. Wow! That's great. That is amazing. So... Wait, this is this is Tales from the Pizza Plex Seven, right? Is B Seven Two Tales from the Pizza Plex Eight? Yes, and then I believe the artist for that said that there were only eight books, but we think there might be a ninth because there is a ninth. Uh, there's like a page for the ninth on Amazon or something like that. So, could the next one be the last one? Because we only have Lucia. We we are left with only Lucia. Oh. Oh, what is going to happen to Lucia? Okay, I think Lucia's going to escape. I think Lucia could escape. I don't know. It's a hard one. I also have another theory about Lucia, and it might be very, very crackpot. But before we talk about that... Uh, that that is the end, by the way. So that's that's the end of the epilogue. Very very short, um, but very very effective. I really like the writing in this, uh, as always, and and it still feels like a movie. I I I think they need to make this as a movie. It'd be it'd be such it'd be so good, uh, or just like a Netflix series. That'd be great. Anyway, I think, um, I think this is amazing, because this is like. A hundred percent, this is Burn Trap being formed. So, in theory, in theory, let's let's make sure we're all on the same page. In theory, Burn Trap is a mimic endoskeleton, or the mimic endoskeleton, and it copies human behavior, or just copies behavior, or whatever. And it copies, like, it, 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 it tells, it, it is programmed to do things, and it does that like no matter what like it was told to get the arms and limbs and stuff like that and throw them away but it does that to the humans not the endos or both whatever anyway my point is we have a mimic and then on top of that it is covered in the flesh of kelly wow I want to go back now and see if there was any foreshadowing because Kelly was very, very sus. Kelly was very sus. So like, I, I guess it makes sense that Kelly was the one. Um, but also that's, that is very creepy. Very creepy. Okay. And then, so we have Mimic. On top of that, we have Kelly's flesh. 
And then on top of that, we have a spring lock suit or the spring bonnie, like the original spring trap suit. So where is that going to come from? I hope that like if, if the next epilogue is the last epilogue, which it very well could be because we should probably have a cover for for number nine by now, or we should have more announcements that there's a 10th book or there's an 11th book. I really feel like it could end at eight. I hope it ends at nine, but I, I hope, I, I, I think it could end at eight. And if, it, if that is true, then the next one is the last epilogue. And in the last epilogue, I feel like what's gonna happen is the Mimic is going to put on the spring trap suit or whatever, wherever that is, Oh my gosh. Wait. This could be... Hmm. Huh. The next epilogue could... Be... I, I don't want to say too much. I feel like the next epilogue could be the, the thing that makes or breaks Stitchline games. Because if we find out... If we find out somehow that William's corpse is still in the pizzeria simulator, um, pizzeria, it's still in the pizza place and it just wasn't found. Oh wait, that wouldn't make sense. Wait, but it could make sense. No, I don't think that could make sense because we already know that the mimic is kind of copying William Afton. Where would he get that from? I don't know, that's, oh, that's strange. If we find out that he is still in the pizza place and the Mimic takes his body, takes his suit and wears his suit and then that becomes Burn Trap, I think that could be the make or break between Fazbear Frights being canon to the games. And I, and I feel like that could happen. I feel like that could very well happen. Like, where else is the spring trap parts going to come from? I read that's what I'm wondering the most right now. I get the human flesh part. I think we predicted something like this would happen, but yeah, this is crazy stuff. And I think this is very, very good for Tales games right now. Like, I, I from a unbiased perspective, I would say this is very, very good for Tales games. So that is exciting. Okay, my crackpot theory about Lucia. What if Lucia becomes Glamrock Freddy? Somehow. What if she... Hmm. It's, it's hard because she can't really escape because she needs to die to possess Glamrock Freddy. But then if she dies down here, how is she, she going to be the one to possess Glamrock Freddy? I don't know. But if she possesses Glamrock Freddy, that would explain the... Oh, my, my friends are here. You know, at the end of Security Breach. So, I, that could be true, and I would I would really really like that reveal that sh that Lucia is Glamrock Freddy and Kelly is is Burn Trap, in a way. Uh, I I just think that would that would go crazy. My question is, if Kelly is in Burn Trap, would her soul still? be in the suit. I don't want to think about that. I don't want to think about that. Would Kelly be possessing the mimic? I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. That would be crazy. That'd be kind of crazy. Unless like Afton comes in and just kicks her out. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. This was genuinely a blast. I, I am really excited to see where this goes. It seems like it's, it's coming to its conclusion now. So one person left, it was Lucia. I think a lot of people predicted that it would be Lucia or Kelly. Um, well, obviously from from last time, obviously it's Lucia and Kelly. But like early on, I think, I think epilogues have been focusing a lot on Lucia. So where is this going to go? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you later. Goodbye.